distractions and interests, these are the mountains that must be moved. I want to conclude with a quotation from Rabbi Arthur Waskow, who wrote about the Jewish silence on the Iraq war. He says, in 2003, I called my daughter in Chicago. She and my son, who had been children in the 70s, had bravely walked in anti-war demonstrations then to save the dying children of Vietnam. In the midst of our conversation, I burst into unexpected tears. I told my daughter that I felt like apologizing to them for my generation's failure. I had thought that what we did in the 70s had made another war like this one, like this coming one, impossible. Yet, here we were, so sad, so sad. And then a few weeks later, I got up early to carry out my household's garbage for the weekly pickup. Grumpy, muttering, cursing. Every week, the blankety-blank garbage. And then it hit me. Just as every week we must carry out the garbage to be picked up from our homes, so every generation, every decade, we must carry out the social and political garbage from our midst. I thought we had taken out the garbage of the Vietnam War once and for all. I, th I thought we had taken out the garbage of the imperial pharaonic presidency once and for all. Not so. Again and again, every decade, every generation, <coughs> new garbage, new wars, new pharaohs, new denials of human rights, new palls of silence, new clouds of despair to be taken out. still say, 
the United States should not be going all over the world bombing places on pretexts that are mostly lies, and we know that a lot of it is lies. I mean, we, this has been published in the mainstream press. There's a lot more that you have to find out about, but even, even the information that's unquestionable is so damaging. I mean, even if you don't believe three quarters of what I said that's happening, the one quarter is terrible, and everybody knows about those things. Everybody has heard about torture and rendition and I also yeah. think that the more we keep everyone economically repressed, there's just there's not enough time or or emotional energy to protest. Well, again, I, I'm 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 very interested in the the silence of people who are not so economically depressed, mm -hmm. middle class people who are activists, and they'll devote a lot of time to their activism for all sorts of other causes, which are fine, you know, but there's some causes that are more essential than others. And they spend a lot of time doing that. And there's a lot of time with this 350 organization and all. They never talk about war or militarism as a cause of carbon emissions. <laughs> and, and so it isn't that people don't have the time, they're not spending it on this issue. Um, you might try to stand up. No. Half Good, because you didn't look at the. Oh, okay. Um, the silence actually uh, was all. Uh, thank you very much for your wonderful talk. And I agree with everything you say. But there is a silence in this room. And the silence begins here. And this is the point. We have all been fed a big story, so that torture, war, killing is justified. And what is that story? The story is that we lost 3,000 people on 9-11 through a dastardly attack. And so we've been told not to think about that, not to look at it, not to investigate it, just to go shopping. Yes. <laughs> but the thing is, that's a story. And we don't want to go there because we're children. We don't want to go and find out about our parents, what they're really up to. But as a scientist who has studied the issue for five years and part of an international group of scientists, I can tell you without a doubt that the towers in New York were blown up. Now, you don't want to hear that because the implications are dark, very, very dark. But until you can overcome, until we, as a, as a public, can overcome our fear of that story and where it leads and see it for the rotten lie that it is, until we do that, we are frozen here, frozen like deer in the headlights of the military industrial complex that Eisenhower warned us about. So, there's a big elephant in the room. It's got 9 11 on it. It says that our government killed 3,000 people because there's no way I can conceive that the towers could have been wired to be blown up if our government had not been part of it. There's just no way. And if you look into it, you'll find all the evidence of the players and the means and the, and the... We don't know all the story. That's why we need investigation. But that is the story that is governing and freezing this country right now because let's go get them, guys. They blew us up. Let's go torture them. Nothing is bad enough for these people in the Middle East. I'm saying that with tongue in cheek. That's what's freezing us as a nation, and it's all based on a lie. Thank you. Yeah, I <laughs> well, I agree with you that there should be an investigation. I would say, regardless of what happened or who did it, there's no justification for our invasion of Afghanistan, based on whatever it was, whether, it, whether their story is true or whether their story is false, there's no justification for invading Afghanistan. Or Iraq. Or Iraq. Or, or Iraq, yes. But, but that was the excuse for, for invading Afghanistan, you know, that, that they were, somehow they were set, they were harbored. They were harbored in Afghanistan, and although they were 
Saudi Arabia, their story was in Saudi Arabia. I mean, it's a crazy story. But whatever, there's no justification for invading any of these countries. Well, I heard a colonel of the army who's speaking out strongly against the militarism in this country yes. on NPR yes. and home tonight. And he's written a book about America going into a permanent state of war, which is coming out soon. But he was talking about you know, the scandal that betray us. Yes. And how, you know, these generals have been at war for 10 years now. For more, yeah, 10 years. 11 years yes. almost. And they're so, you know, yes. on the pedestal. And they're driving around like Petraeus with 100 motorcycle cavalcades going to parties with caviar and champagne, and they're like completely corrupt. You know, and that it's because we've been at war for so long that these guys are so, you know, elevated in their stature. And now it, it's just, they're going to be, you know, brought down. And it's interesting because maybe this will, you know, this wave against these guys can be written and, you know, joined in by the peace movement to say, you know, what you thought these people were and the war that you know, it's not only who they were, but the wars that they were fighting were corrupt, oh, completely corrupt, and go back to 9-11, and where did it all come from, you know? But, I mean, I, I don't know, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Something has to spark it. I mean, Obama's been reelected. You can't get rid of him. You know, we can criticize him all we want now, and he's still going to have his four more years. So we've got nothing to lose. Yes. Now. Well. Well. As I said at the beginning, ending the silence is so important. It's something that all of us can do, and we can do it in various ways: talking to friends, talking to neighbors, talking to people who don't normally hear that story. But the other thing is, if you belong to any organization. Whatever it is, you can invite somebody from Peace Action or Iraq Veterans Against War, or Vietnam Veterans Against War, to, to come as, as a speaker. And that, that will help more people to actually hear this and start wondering about it. Now, I, I volunteer all the time to talk at Rotary Clubs, and actually I sometimes have. And, and, you know, I'm going to places that, where people are a little bit, might be a little bit hostile. It's very good, though, if you belong to an organization, whether it's, it's for fly fishing or tube radios or whatever. So if you're a member of something, they will respect you more and listen to you. And, and that's what we can do. And, of course, we are risking offending people because they say, oh, yeah, we, we have, our boys are in the service and don't... We don't want to feel that they're there for nothing or for evil reasons, but you, I think you have to take that risk and not worry about offending people because this is very serious issue. You know, people shouldn't live in fairy tales.